Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial Regina Pat's podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And this is our 2018-19 season preview episode for September 5th, 2018. I'm Peter Lubardius. You're listening to Pat's Cast with Matt and Chris. All right, everyone, we got a great episode today. We have Kevin on. He is a longtime season ticket holder with the Pats. He's got lots of experience, and we are going to ask him some questions about what he thinks about rookie camp, what he saw in preseason, who's making the team, who's not making the team, especially getting into that 20-year-old situation that we have. Uh, It's a pretty unique one. we got some really good guys that we need to talk about. We also want to talk about predictions, uh, getting into standings, where he sees the team coming coming in and getting into the question of the day we want to talk about who's going to be wearing the letters a lot of you guys gave us some feedback and that was great we're going to talk about that with kevin so let's get right into it let's talk with kevin here coming up on the interview next i'm going to welcome kevin shaw to the program here kevin uh chris and i both wanted to have you on the program can you just give us a little introduction about yourself what you're about uh, yeah, my name's Kevin. I'm uh, basically a Pats historian, so I've been told. Uh, I've been watching the Pats since I was nine months old, so that would be about 39 years or so. <laughs> and this was my about 19th training camp that I've been to, so I've good. watched a lot of hockey. <laughs> right, yeah, and that's, that's, good. that's why we wanted to have you on. Chris and I both had some family engagements and things going on during rookie camp and preseason and didn't get to as much as we would have liked. Yeah, um, so we thought, well, we might as well get somebody on that uh, seen what was going on and could give us a, a quick rundown. So Exactly. So let's just go maybe chronologically. Rookie camp, uh, I made it for, for one scrimmage. Um, I quickly realized I, I watch hockey as a fan. I, I'm not, not a scout. I'm not watching it as a scout. So I guess uh, anybody listening, any of the kids, I don't know if you listen to us or not, but... Any of the players that came out and and was in the were in the rookie camp, don't take what we say as uh, listen to your coaches and go with that. But um, Kevin certainly has a lot more experience watching hockey than I. Um, Kevin, give me give us a little rundown of what you saw at rookie camp. Rookie camp actually was pretty good this year. There was no real true standouts, but uh, many of them many of them could fit a couple years down the road for sure. Yeah, I think without having those high picks the last couple of years, there isn't going to be that, you know, that star kind of in the making, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Kevin, going back to like past years when you saw Sam Steele in rookie camp, Adam Brooks, those guys that racked up a lot of points for us later on, did they stand out quite a bit in rookie camp? Oh, Sam Steele definitely did. He was he was head and shoulders above everybody. Yeah. Except yeah. for he was smaller when he first came in, but he yeah. was he was way better than everybody. Oh, okay. So yeah, you, this, I always go ahead. I always saw something in Adam Brooks, but when he first started, he was just kind of a a young guy that had to work his way in. Yeah, and then finally he made it when he was eighteen years old and yeah, made it he, to a big time. Yeah, he he developed a little bit later, maybe with that coaching change, he got a, a little bit of a kickstart. But yeah, like yeah, Steele, sure. you could see the the skill was evident, obviously, when he was fifteen, sixteen, right? So, oh yeah. So nobody stood up, and nobody looked really that bad out there either it just no it, yeah. everybody can skate this year there's been past past training camps where half the kids couldn't skate and you, you could tell which five or six were going to make the roster and that was it this year everybody kind of fit yeah it, that's good i think they're looking you know for skaters like they want push the pace have people that can you know skate hard and and fast so definitely were you happy with the guys that did make the uh into the blue and white at least yeah, I was I was I was pretty happy for most part. There was a couple of kids I wanted to uh, wanted them to stick around, like uh, Colton Panowick and Jake Johnson. I would have liked to have seen, but they took a different path because they're both American kids. So yeah, yeah. I mean, we want to talk about Sam again. Like, he stood out to me a little bit in that rookie scrimmage that I did see. And is this something that's true that if someone's getting a bit of attention, they start wearing the Pats gear? Is that a, a thing, or is that just something that you that's, noticed? It, that's happened for the last few years, but this year they they decided to go with just him. Yeah, yeah. 
usually usually the like the the draft picks and the design players all have that gear already, but none of them had it this year. Oh, okay. I um, I just he noted we know he stood out on the ice to me. He seemed to be he almost had a bit of a Josh Mahura flair to him, getting up into the rush, but getting back in time too, not putting himself too far out of position. Oh yeah, he he was he was good for sure. Chris, anything from rookie camp you wanna? Um, yeah, I only seen that one scrimmage as well. So yeah, McGinley stood out. He's about uh, about the only that really stood out for me. He was all over the ice, but you could tell he was maybe a step ahead of everybody else. So he was kind of you know doing his thing out there. We didn't get a chance to see Dubinsky. No, yeah, I saw him walking around in yeah. his in his walking boot. That's yeah. about it. That's unfortunate. <laughs> That's probably yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> I haven't heard a time frame for that. Has anyone anyone know on that? No, I haven't heard anything mm. either. No. They're not going to say too much. But no. um, The only other, uh, Rhett Gibson, I know, I noticed uh, he had a pretty good shot. Like, I just, he stood out. I had him in, jotted down. No, nobody else really stood out to me from there. And like, I, like I said, nobody stood out in a bad way either. Yeah, so, no. Yeah. yeah, nobody was getting burnt on the back they, end or, you know. They definitely looked like rookies anyways. It yeah, did. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's so then you like went rookies. to... The, went to the uh the white and blue game and the i actually quite enjoyed that game it was it was fun to watch i noticed um i think it was about middle of the second period things really the intensity picked up it seemed like guys you know i don't know if they knew i guess the the atmosphere of that game has to be set and the tone has to be set people don't know are we going full out are we hitting and then then a few hits happened with uh gurney got got hit pretty hard and then then it picked up and the competition picked up and the the guys started to play a bit harder and kind of fight for that roster spot and get some attention, it seemed like. Definitely. It was good. It was one of the better ones in the last few years, for sure. Uh, leading up to the Blue and White game, were you, uh, what did you think of the, the players that they did bring into the game? Uh, the, the couple guys that they brought in, like uh, Garrett Wright and uh, uh, Riker Evans, when they brought them in, the 17-year-olds, yeah. they got better. The, since last year, they've they've improved a lot, and I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, they're definitely a bubble players, like to make this roster this year. So, oh yeah, in that blue and white, I noticed a bit of chemistry forming between Gurney and Henry. I don't know if that'll be something that they can try and keep going through preseason right. into the season. I don't know if they'll be on the same line or not, but I did notice they were they were playing well together. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how Gurney fits into the top end, but he's yeah. he's. Doesn't may look not too be bad, a top anyways. Liner, but you know, it was just something I noticed. Oh yeah, for sure. Anything from Blue and White, Chris? Nah, not much. Good. I didn't. I got there pretty late. Yeah, so I didn't see too much. But yeah, good. So. Then we had the uh, preseason tournament. A few teams visiting. I kind of like that format. That was cool. I didn't know they they did that. I, yeah, it's something a little newer. They've done the last few years. I think with they've always done it in the cooperators with all the rinks. You know, teams can come yeah. in and have a practice or two and play a couple games while they're here yeah i made it to uh both games on the weekend um different lineups each each night kevin what do you what do you think about them friday night uh, was a pretty good game pats dressed with the same amount of veterans as the swift Current broncos and, yeah and it's gonna be a long year for the swifties i think yeah yeah <laughs> they're they're gonna be a rough team this year they had so i was many... happy they had so many nineteen-year-olds, uh, right? So, oh yeah, I, I think you, they're they're gonna be they're gonna be in for rough. I think. Yeah, I don't know if you listened to the interview that uh, the Pipeline Show did with with uh, their play-by-play guy, and he was just going through a list of guys that are gone, and they have a lot of holes to fill. Yeah. But, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that's junior hockey, right? It's you win, and then <laughs> it's a cyclical game well, for them. Yeah, I so. seen I seen a stat. 13 of the 18 skaters were 19 or older last so, year yeah for yeah. Swift current yeah so, i believe it yeah that's you know as compared to um everett only had seven so you know that kind of shows you the two tail of tape in that final but you know that that age ended up uh, helping them win so you know you win you win right you go all out to win and when you do it it kind of it gives the fan base, you know, a couple of year grace, three years grace yeah. kind of thing. You yeah. win a championship, especially for Swift Current being a small town team. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, they're, they'll be fine. They're still buzzing from it, I think. Yeah. Um, who who stood up for from you? Like, 
is there some guys from last year that really stood out? Kobe Moore, so I hope he has a hope he has a breakout season. I was just kids gonna, got I had him circled he's got some here super too. Super skill. I he has some I was super watch, skill that guy. Watching his hands and some of the dangles he was doing, I was like, where did this kid come from? Like Well, he was the eighth overall pick. Right. In his Panther years. Yeah. So Yeah, absolutely. So he's he's showing off that skill and he yeah. was he stood out to me. Absolutely. He he looked really good. I don't know if it'll translate to the regular season or not, but Well and all that extra time they got there. To practice, like they brought in all these guys that were on the roster, or you know, on the team, uh, and all that extra time they had to practice between the end of the playoffs and Memorial Cup, like that helps out too. Like that's yeah. a whole, that's a whole like month of practice and working on your skill, and you know, so right? It I wasn't mean, a bad thing. So they would have had Marco Creta, um, who else would have been there? Kobe Morris, so Scott Mahovlich. Uh, Duncan Pierce, but all those guys have been getting playing time with that team last year, right? During practice, at least. So. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Everybody that was on the roster, even, right? So Credit's even marked as a rookie, but yeah, he, well, you got to play a certain amount of games yeah. for your your rookie season. But he's an experienced rookie. Yeah, which exactly. Is, right, all those and other guys, great experience. Nyhoff and I'm sure Dubinsky was even there. You know, some of the younger guys, Parker Gavlis, Gavlis, yeah, yeah, Crane. Um. Yeah, all those guys got all that practice Harkins. time. Yeah, Harkins. Yeah, Harkins, yeah. For yeah. Sure. yeah so. like I know at the end of the season last year, we're thinking, oh, you've gotten the team. There's gonna be nobody left, and but now you're looking down through here. We picked up. Well, when we talk about our imports too, man, they were impressive too for two quote unquote rookies again. Um, Alkamov had. Some he's really amazing. nice goals, yeah. Yeah, he's got some serious skill, and he can he likes to hit too. Like he throws the body around. Yeah, um, ho- hope you keep it up the whole season. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's it's a big step up, right, for them. That's got a lot of games. And, and then set up on defense looked really good too. He looked yeah. solid. Totally. Nobody like, doesn't panic or anything. He's pretty good. Like yeah. I I don't know. We were all thinking, oh, we're be bad. We're not gonna have any good players and this and that. And now I'm kind of looking through. I'm like, hey, maybe we might have a semi-competitive team here yeah like there isn't a ton of holes if those guys that had part-time experience last year make the team there isn't that many holes to fill like, no and you we know, got stable coaching like, so you look at the d the d and the 20 situation is there but you got flurry puto harkins galvis creta set off like there's six d right there that are, and one only one guy doesn't have whl experience you know yeah it just depends what they do with the 20 situation but five or six D possibly have WHL experience and then your forwards like you only got a couple holes to fill with new guys so Kevin what's your prediction on the 20 year olds oh I don't even want to go there <laughs> uh I don't know if you got a I chance don't... there was an interview with uh Phil the Thrill on the Pipeline podcast he's saying Kale Fleury is in town and he's here he's just injured from his uh whatever that was with the Canadians, the mini camp or yeah. whatever they call it. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah. So he's here. And he's getting uh, treatment here. That's interesting a bit. I think we all agreed Dumba's here. He's not going to be there. No. Are, are we, I mean, to carry a 20 year old goalie as a backup, that's. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Not, he's that, here till <laughs> Paddock gets back. And then you look through. So if you have Flurry, Puto it sounds like he's for sure. But he, He's hurt. Yeah, he is. He'll be back within a month, they say. Yeah, they said October sometime. Yeah. So do you keep it? If you can, you have him on your roster and just is that a rule? Well, see, usually the twenty-year-old deadline kind of to make your you can run with more than three up until I don't know. I looked. I tried to look for the date, but it's usually mid-October. Okay. But if you have one injured, you can carry the fourth guy. Yeah, you yeah. carry okay yeah. until that October until he's time. Healthy, yeah. yeah, and then you then then after that you gotta make your call, right? So, so, so who are you calling off? <laughs> that it's tough. I mean, yeah, Paddock won't be gone long, so Dumbo won't be here long. No. So then you got you're down to uh, Flurry Puto. Puto's out. So then for now, so you got Hyman and Scholler. Yeah, and then one of those Platt. and Platt, right? I, and Platt. I mean, I can't see you keeping Platt around. 
Yeah. As a 20 year old yeah, grinder. He doesn't, and, yeah. Exactly. Your 20 year old, if he's a forward, he has to be scoring. Scoring. Goals. I'd much rather have a 20 year old D man. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of years ago, they had Macklin, so can't really say that for sure. Yeah, that's true. But and were the choices the same? Like, have they had, that's another thing I want to ask you. Have they had this, this many guys to choose from, these kind of problems with their 20 year olds? Not for many years, no. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's interesting. I guess it's kind of a good problem that's to have. Hot, that's a hot topic right now. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. I mean, you go you go on Twitter, everyone has different opinions. Yeah. Um I mean people keeping flurry till till when? On trade deadline or before just to get back some of those draft picks we lost. Yeah, like it's it's not up to us, I guess, if he comes back here. It's kind of up to the Montreal Canadiens, but it's kind of odd that he's back here getting treatment. Yeah. With his injury and not there. But so I don't know. You know, obviously we don't know the situation between him and the team, so he's If not... he was signed, he could be in Montreal. Exactly, right? So it's so. he's not signed yet, you know. So who knows? Yeah. You know, Bradley got picked by them and he never did sign with them, so and then he yeah, went and for sure. signed with uh, the Marlies, so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe Flurry isn't maybe he's not too interested yet. So see what happens, right? He uh, has to the draft, so he's got a long yeah, way. Exactly. To... He's still got another, you know, he's got the season, but Um Kevin, are you predicting a sell off? I uh, I think they'll have to sell some some assets to get some assets back. So Yeah, we gotta I'll just... have to predict who though. <laughs> yeah, it just depends who's having a season or not, right? Right. So <laughs> And it depends it's will the Don't pad- to sell him off so he has sold his, his big boys off before. He has, yeah. well yeah even when we had that good season what was that 14-15 when he s- traded all those guys away yeah. and everybody's like what are you doing Yeah, Every, I remember it I was like what's going on here I know I'm, you even <laughs> there was a Facebook post you shared yeah I know it was like around that time like four years yeah, ago it was yeah. like <laughs> yeah look at and now it's like yeah it turned out for the yeah. the good right yeah. so yeah, we'll have to get some of those T-shirts made in Paddock. We trust. Yeah, I think I think we have to make a run of those for sure. There's a lot of interest in those. Um, I just is there a point where they decide? Is it kind of like Brandon last year, right? Where they're they're in the running, and all of a sudden they decide if they're going to make a go, or if they're going to sell off, and they sold off, and I don't know. I could see us being competitive. So, what point do they say? Oh, hey, let's stick with what we have and see what we can do. Or do you just keep looking to the future? Well, I think I think you got to get some of those assets back. Like, yeah, I don't know to what extent you sell off, but uh, you got to get a couple firsts or seconds because we're we're yeah. gutted, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like it, yeah. It's like you got to get something back. Even doesn't matter how good a season you're gonna have. I think because we're not gonna be first place running the table here. No. So. I think it all like, depends on how the first part of the season goes too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm you, saying. Like yeah. if they're if they're tanking, yeah, you sell them off. But what if they are competitive? I you think know? you still even if they are competitive, I think you still have to sell, unfortunately. Yeah. I have I agree. Yeah. 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 You can only just, hang on so much. It's just a shame the prices won't be anywhere near what they were last year. Yeah. No the asking, yeah. Because yeah, Brandon made out like bandits. And they're going to be good this year. Right? Yeah, just one. They just push them back one more year, and it's a way easier division this year. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. What are speaking of? Well, Chris is giving us a prediction here. Kevin, what are your predictions? Who do you who do you think is going to be the top dog? Where do you see the Pats in there? Who? I I think Brandon's probably going to be one of the top ones in the East. Prince Albert, Saskatoon. Yeah. If Saskatoon gets some defense, I think they'll be really good. Yeah. Um, in this in the central, got to go with uh, Lethbridge or Medicine Hat. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, out west, it's there's there's they're all over the place. Yeah. yeah. We don't really follow the west too much. Yeah. Even that that central is kind of up in the air. Like I don't I think, think it's, Red Deer's going anywhere. I think it's the Hurricanes. Down. Yeah, I think it's Lethbridge I think, and yeah. maybe Medicine Hat. Yeah. Yeah, Lethbridge. And you know, Kootenay might slide into that third spot ish. They're kind of on the upswing. Um, and then for me, for the East, I think it's Brandon, PA, and then, yeah, like I said, maybe Sastoon, the third-ish. And I think I, we'll be battling Moose Jaw for fourth 
in the division. Boy. And I think Swift Current's is going to be bringing up the rear. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think PA is going to be the the team to beat. Yeah, they year. have a lot of returners. I just listened to the Pipeline interview yeah. today with their with their uh and Look what voice. they did last year. Their last part of the season and into the playoffs against Moose Yeah, they, they had a good run, yeah. definitely. Even losing in the first round, they they played well. So, I think the Pats cross over and they make a little noise like Brandon did last year. That's my prediction. All right. <laughs> Mark it down. <laughs> Stamp signed and sealed. <laughs> All right. By make a little noise, I mean they win maybe the first round. Oh, that's really? pretty bold. Wow. Pretty bold. <laughs> that means they'll have bold to, I think Brandon will finish first in the conference, so then they'd, they'd have to finish seventh, the Pats. Hey, but I'm hey, sticking yeah, with the, it. No, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Like, I think they'll, be, it just depends what they what they do with the trade deadline. Like, yeah, yeah, they're selling off, and if they kept this team, I'm sure they could make the wild card for sure. But if they sell off, it's going to be a tough go on the second half and into the playoffs if they make it. It will. Um, okay, we wanted to bring up question of the day. I asked, who do people think are going to have the letters this year? Kevin, who's your picks? Oh, man. Depending on what happens with Flurry, I think. Yeah. If he's back and he's here for a while, I think he might be the captain. If not, it'll be Lecision. Lecision with the C? I, Yeah. But other than that, the A's, who knows? They could go any direction. Yeah, I mean, there's some thought that they go to the older players. It's, a lot of people left Henry off their list, I was noticing. I, like, I think, like I mentioned, like we don't have privy to the locker room. We don't know what it's like. We don't know who's those those leaders and who who maybe, even though they're good, like scoring goals, they might not be the, the leaders of the team. Um I would say my pick would be Flurry um, with the C. No, uh, no, I'm I, I'm, I'm going to retract that. I'm going to say Lasician, Flurry, and Holmes. My dark horse was Hyman. <laughs> <laughs> he might be a dark horse. I to think make the team. <laughs> yeah, that that's why he's I a dark horse. I think will be an A when he gets back. You think so? I think so. Chris, who's your picks? Um. Yeah, I got Lecition for sure. I put money on Lecition for the C, I think. And then uh, Flurry. Uh, yeah, Puto. Yeah, I like that. Uh, trying to think who else. Um, yeah, you just never know. Maybe Pratt. They'll probably run three A's. So there's Pratt. And then uh, then you look at, yeah, maybe Holmes and Henry since Puto's going to be out for a while. And they might wear one for a while. But I put money on Lecition wearing the C. For All sure. right. So. so some of the listeners read Stoll. He says Flurry will be the C if he's back. Puto, Hyman, and Jake as a alternates. And um, Fanaholic Scott says captain should be Jake Lasician. Assistant going to Flurry, Puto, Henry, and he could see Holmes wearing it on the road when Henry's not there. Uh. Kyron Morrison thinks Jake should be a lock for the C. Henry and Scholler with an A. He's been around. He's been on the team for a while. Yeah, Scholler's Scholler wore an A for a bit at the start of the year this past year. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Tammy Joe thinks Lithician, Nick Henry, and Robbie Holmes should be wearing the letters. So uh, thanks for everyone for responding to that. That's good. We're gonna try and get those question of the days out before episodes. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of feedback. No people are actually paying attention to us. So that's nice. Um, yeah, any last predictions you want to give us, Kevin? Any more insight? Not really. It's it's going to be an interesting year. It will be. I'm actually, you know, I'm excited for it. Um, just from a fan's perspective, last year, last year always felt like they were... They were always walking on eggshells or there was so much expectations, right? And there was always any bit of failure was so over-examined and over-emphasized. I'm, I'm looking forward to this year and watching these guys and seeing how the team comes together and watching the decision the, the management makes around that trade deadline and seeing what happens after and hopefully a little bit of a playoff run and 
I don't know. I'm okay with it. I, I feel good. I'm excited. Yeah, no, it should it should be a fun year. Yeah, I look forward to it. So, got the season tickets the other day. Yeah, hand delivered. So fancy. Yeah, nice little gift basket. <laughs> <laughs> so not like the year before. It was just an envelope with use your damn tickets. Yeah, and three Yolanda. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they went back yeah. to being a little nicer this year. So yeah, nice little coaster set gift. So. Yeah, and the return of the um, all the benefits. Yeah, the bring a friend and stuff like that. So. Yeah, so I know I even looked. Uh, looks like two thirteen is sold out for the year, pretty much. Like, I looked at a few games trying to see well, when when can we bring a friend and. Did do did anyone hear anything about season ticket sales? How many they did or? No, I didn't know anything. So, but if our section's full, I mean. Yeah, like I looked at the but Sunday games and. Huh. Last I heard, they were north of three thousand. That was what I was told. Okay, so. right on. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, I have to exchange seats if I want to bring a friend and sit yeah. with them. So yeah, who knows? Those seats were half empty. That's true. Or empty half the time when last season. Even last so year, yeah, it was it must have been corporate tickets because there was yeah. different people every every time they were there. We're up in the the nosebleeds. Kevin's got primo yeah. thirty plus year <laughs> season ticket holder seats. Yeah. Those are nice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't mind where we are. I like it there. So. Yeah. No, I mean, there's not. Yeah. There's no bad seat in the uh, house, really. Yeah, no, so there isn't. Say, right? yeah, so, yeah, no. Happy with it. Happy with the price. Um, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, anything else you want, Kevin or Chris? Any more questions for him? No, I think I think we're good. Uh, thanks for coming on and giving us a little bit of insight yeah. since we didn't uh, get up to much of the camps and yeah. stuff. So, thanks for everything, answering these questions and helping us out here. For sure. Okay. For sure. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. All right. I look forward to talking to you guys again. Sounds yeah, good. absolutely. Good. Thanks, man. No problem. All right. Thanks again, Kevin, for coming on. You can catch him on Twitter at the Blue Liner. He uh, he tweets about, like you said, lots of older stuff about the Pats. He's tweeted about old pictures and teams and stuff. So yeah, kind of a neat really follow. Good. I've been following him for a bit now, even before this. So yeah, he's lots of interesting stuff coming yeah. out of him. Um, uh, one thing we did forget about when we were talking about the 20-year-old situation, apparently Platt has, has enrolled at the U of R classes, yeah. so if he doesn't make the team, looks like he's going to be looking to play at the U of R, possibly. Kind of so. taking care of himself there. So that's yeah, good. Yeah, for I mean, sure. He's, he's kind of on the bubble, and like I said, yeah, if you have a 20-year-old, you kind of want him to be a scoring, scoring yeah. guy, but yeah. you know, it is what it is, and we've had others that haven't, so, but see what happens. I know the U of R could use all the dub guys they can get yeah. they're really short on that program struggling isn't it yeah they're, they're no offense to the junior a guys but most of the teams are 70 30 major junior junior a is whereas the cougars are about the opposite and it's it's definitely a struggle for them the last few years and i've seen they got a few more commitments lately so from dub guys so hopefully they can get going right on so we got some preseason games coming up we have uh one on friday the 7th Wheat Kings, another, so it's a home and home with the Wheat Kings. Uh, Thursday the 7th, they're up in Saskatoon with the Blades, and then back in Regina on the 14th against the Raiders. Um, yeah, the top three teams, we think, probably in the, yeah. in the division for sure. Actually, so it's right. going to be a, a good test here. Really last good. four preseason games. We've played the Moose John, the Swift Current, so they're the ones we're going to be battling with near the bottom. So it'll be a good test for them. It is a good preseason. Has WHO Live have you seen any information? No. And I just tweeted it out about uh, how the AHL just dropped New Line. Right. And they're doing their own thing. And uh, 80 bucks. Uh, yeah, for the whole league. The whole league. Yeah. Whole $80 league. American. So it's like 100 bucks, let's say. Every the game. The whole league. Yes. I know. Like, that's crazy. It is. It's like, it's nuts. I, I haven't heard anything about New Line. They haven't had. No. Um, I know the OHL. Somebody's asked about the OHL. It's still on the playoff package. Yeah. Just so like it's WHL. WHL. And. I don't know. They by now they usually have early bird pricing out. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I know there was an interview with the commissioner, and they were talking about. It. He seems still kind of pretty big on New Lion, but man, when know. when you see this come out from the AHL and they're eighty well, bucks, uh, the playoff package was more than the NHL package, and the NHL is HD quality, and all New Lion is right. doing is taking the scoreboard feed and that's it up to the, the thing. internet. Like they don't do much. If they did something. 
if they had <laughs> a broadcast, if right? they there, if there was more to it other than them just hooking up to the jumbotron, and plugging in a wire, yeah, exactly. Then I could like, see, it, but they just use the radio feed, yeah, like, and and the scoreboard it just feed. doesn't, like, yeah, it, they're, they're not doing much for their money. No, exactly. And, yeah, it's it's a ripoff, like, definitely. But I mean, like, I still paid for it. We'll pay for it. We will, but. Yeah. We're nerds and <laughs> but yeah. casual fans won't. They won't pay. No, How I, much was a season? Like I don't know. I paid eighty dollars ish for your team's away away games. games. And that was just so before they games. went on the road trip. So it wasn't the full season. It's just before they went to the US. Because right. like I wanted to watch the US games. Yeah. So then I broke down and bought it. They had it was like ten percent off whatever price right. they had. So I paid about eighty dollars, I think, for three quarters of the road season right so but i mean yeah the ahl price is 80 bucks us for every single game right your team home and away is 60 your team home or away is 40 and like so Man. yeah i would and it's 100 hd bucks, and everything i would like that would it's not in just, a second i would do that yeah like it's not they said it's all in hd and you can you know mobile devices and all sorts of different platforms you can use it on so yeah, like it's. I it's, don't know. It could seems, be too late for this year. Yeah, for them to switch it all up. But maybe if it, they should go talk to the HL and yeah. see what's see what they're doing because yeah, that's 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 a great price point. Like, yeah, I'd be all over that. Yeah, then you could watch if your team's not playing. You can watch some other game if you feel like it. Yeah. No. I. To me, I haven't. I'm much more interested in the WHL than the NHL. I haven't watched a full NHL game. No. In a long, a regular I a season. A bit of the playoffs this year, but yeah. I, I regular season, I don't yeah. watch yeah. anything. It's been a long time. Any other, any other gossip you want to talk about? Uh, no, not really. I think that's all I can think of for now. So, Red Sox season's wrapped up. Oh yeah, we gotta give them a shout out too. For they sure, made it all the way to the championship game yeah. five. Yeah. See, okay. Speaking of coverage, their coverage is better. You go yeah. on YouTube or Facebook. Yeah, and I know. Like watch some it. of the, the teams. <laughs> broadcast the away games like swift current has a really good broadcast medicine hat has an all right broadcast yeah like it's yeah that's good so then when they do those access games here and watch them on facebook if you can't make it to the game or whatever yeah their their broadcasts are good for the home games here or access for that matter they have good coverage of yeah yeah when access sports yeah 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 Yeah, yeah summer's wrapping up falls in the air Football's starting up, NFL, college. Yeah, it's Lots busy of... here. I've been <laughs> listening to tons of WHL podcasts. And yeah. College has yeah. started up, so the podcast time of year. machine is going like hot <laughs> this yeah. past couple of weeks. All yeah. the season previews from the Pipeline show. That's It's a good insight, you know, 15, 20 minutes from each. Once each you're team. done listening to ours, yeah, go listen to Pipeline because it, uh, yeah. it's it, really pretty good. Yeah, the team previews are nice because then you can kind of get a rundown on the names yeah. if you're interested Who to in look hearing, out for you know especially in our division listen to the, those teams yeah. so you know what guys you're going to be seeing at the games here so yeah. Yeah. and then if you do want to listen to the west you can kind of get a handle on who's going to be out there but we just don't see them very often so but yeah those team previews are nice so it's in most of the time it's from the broadcaster the radio guy or whoever yeah, so people they, are Really with the team pretty yeah. passionate about the team too yeah they so. know who's who and who's coming back and who's not some of them are a couple weeks old now so that there's a little bit of outdated news but i mean yeah. for the most part you know get some good good insight on the teams good yeah i'm like i said before i'm 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 excited for this season i'm we've been we started this last season just kind of at the end and been kind of planning it and thinking about it all summer and here we are and ready to go and plan is to do a weekly ep- episode reviewing the weekend's games and looking forward to the next week's games uh, obviously covering the pats more than anyone but uh we'll still talk about the other teams in our division and whatnot and keep an eye on that yeah definitely it's given me some renewed interest in the team so it's gonna be fun i think especially with this little bit of a down year maybe but uh we're still gonna have a pretty competitive team i think like it just all depends what we do at the trade deadline, but I think the first half should be all right. I think, like you know, yeah, we'll compete. I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it. Hopefully, you guys do too. It sounds like uh, there's lots of fans still out there. The red and, or sorry, the white and blue game 
there's enough people there. The preseason pre it's not even preseason, it's pre preseason. Yeah, there's the people tournament. there cheering. Yeah. Like it, yeah. I mean it's still the team's carrying over some energy. It's good. Hope to see you guys out there. Again, we'd like to hear from you on Twitter. Uh any feedback from there. We do read it and it, it keeps us going. So Yeah, for sure. Give us a sh- let us know what you think of the show and uh I opened yeah. up Instagram too. Uh I think it's the same handle, uh WHL Patscast. That's more your jam. Yeah. The kids are all on that. So yeah. We opened that up just to like, follow. Get, yeah. Follow, follow the kids. The kids. <laughs> stuff, right? so. Yeah. That's what they seem to do. Um, shout out to Max Paddock and Marco Creta. Saw them at the Labor Day Classic. And they, I saw Max and I was like, I swear that's Max Paddock. Well, why right. is he wearing green? And I, was, I told my wife, I think that's him. She's like, just, I already had a false sighting already. <laughs> my Jake yeah. Lassician yeah, sighting. Yeah. I wasn't. didn't think it was him. And, <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't. No, no it wasn't. It's... That's okay. And uh, so anyways, I saw him. I was walk- he was walking down the ramp. And it was actually this little kid pointed at him. I was like, that's Max Paddock, isn't he? He's like, yeah. And he's in the picture with us. I have no idea who he is. Oh, he? yeah. That, I was wondering. <laughs> I was going to ask you who that kid was. Like, oh, yeah. It's not your kid. No, <laughs> he's some some kid yeah. that recognized him too. So, uh, yeah, Max was there and actually the got a picture with him. And I had to call him out for wearing, for wearing green. Both of them are from... Manitoba. Oh, are so, they okay? Yeah. So they've. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they're their billets or their. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> I don't know where they got them, but it was. Yeah. It was pretty funny. To Nobody wants to cheer for the Blue Bombers, anyways. No, but, exactly. Yeah. So, so that was fun. It's fun seeing them in uh, the community. I think they probably like getting noticed. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, that was fun. So thanks to them for taking that picture and try and tell them about our podcast i don't think they were too impressed by it. <laughs> whatever i don't think they listen that's fine yeah they're not uh, they're <laughs> definitely not our target audience here so but. no okay uh okay thanks again to kevin that was a lot of fun and uh we will talk to you guys throughout the season should be fun all right see you guys good mm-hmm.